It's been a little while. Zortrax 3D printers pride themselves on being accurate and reliable. But you gotta ask yourself, are they worth the price? Hey everybody, I reached out to Zortrax because they had just announced their next generation of 3D printers. Accurate, reliable, and now with dual nozzles so that they can do dissolvable supports. I was super excited for the potential of a 3D printer like this. Now, they agreed to send me their M200, their 3D printer with only one nozzle, but still accurate and reliable. And honestly, I was super excited to get my hands on this 3D printer. In fact, I was so excited that I was doing something that I hadn't done since my first 3D printer. I was making lists. I was writing out the things that I wanted to use this printer for, and that's a feeling I haven't had in a very long time. Unfortunately, it didn't last. The Zortrax 3D printer is not a cheap consumer 3D printer. This is more in the prosumer range. It's about the same cost as an Ultimaker 2, and I think that the comparison between those two are very fair. And while I've used an Ultramaker 2 at the Makerspace, I never had that first out-of-the-box experience with one. But my out-of-the-box experience with the Zortrak, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't good. It needed to be assembled, but not a whole lot. It, its assembly was comparable to a CR-10. It came mostly assembled, but you did have to, to put the build plate in there, and you also had to connect the build plate Z-axis cable. And honestly, I've never had good experience with build plate cables, but this was probably the worst I've ever seen. I had to hold the build plate up over my big head as it was stuck in there. One big hand holding the build plate up and the other big hand trying to find where this cable goes as this build plate kept trying to drop on my head. I felt like I was stuck in some very teeny tiny ancient trap that was set for explorers and the thought occurred that this was making me feel like indiana jones but not the swashbuckling sexy indiana jones the we are going to die frowny face emoji indiana jones it wasn't a good feeling honestly and for a printer of this price i didn't expect to be doing that much assembly and to have that experience. Then I turned it on and discovered that they ship it with no firmware, which is odd. I mean, I can understand it from a support perspective. You want people to be on the latest firmware, so don't put a firmware on there so that they have to do it, but that's an odd step to go through. And they guard their firmware. You cannot download their firmware and you can't download their slicer without a serial number from one of their 3D printers. Again, it's just an odd choice. It just feels like one more thing getting in the way of me using this machine. But if the experience of using the machine is good, all of this could be forgiven. Now, is it easy to use? Well, their slicer's not bad. It's not any better than any other slicer. And unfortunately, I couldn't get it to connect to my home Wi-Fi. I think that this is a problem with my home Wi-Fi. I need an upgrade. That meant that I kept having to do the USB shuffle, except that I kept on making a mistake and I would reach around the side where most other 3D printers have their SD and USB stick, which I blame on them, not on Zortrax. They put it in front where it should be, but I kept on reaching around the side and pulling out the Wi-Fi dongle and then trying to load files on that. Annoying, but that was my fault. Now, when I ran the printer, the first print that I got off of it was not bad, except that they insist on putting a raft on it. And the reason why they insist on putting a raft, I discovered, was because their build plate is not smooth. Their build plate is a perforated sheet of metal, which is very, very interesting, but it means that the bottom of their raft, or if you could convince it to print without a raft, the bottom of your 3D print has a lot of little tiny sharp points on it. But it also means that this build plate doesn't release your print. 
you have to uh, be in there with a chisel chopping it off and then you have to use that chisel again to chop the raft of this thing off and as i'm sitting here with a hammer and a chisel in there trying to remove this 3d print i realize for the second time it's making me feel like indiana jones but not the good indiana jones once again i'm feeling like the indiana jones that's doing actual archaeology work which is the boring Indiana Jones. So boring that he was never seen in any movie actually doing archaeology work. It's over for 2, guys. Now, I did have a little side project that I've been working on that hopefully I'll be telling you about in a future video, but I wanted to see what it would be like to print Legos on 3D printers. And many of us have tried printing Legos, and I have in the past, but they've never quite worked. I decided to be scientific about this. I was going to print Legos on every 3D printer I could get my hands on, and then I would test them out. Do they mate to each other? Do they mate to real Legos? Do real Legos mate to them? And of all the printers that I tested, the Zortrax is the only 3D printer that not only produced bricks that mated to real Legos and real Legos mated to them, but that the stud the one piece that you have to have perfect contact all the way around actually worked on. And I don't know what they do. I think that they probably have just nailed down the internal circle detection and compensation. That's, that's where prints go bad. And they figured out to find those and spread them out just a little bit. But it's also due to the fact that if you're going to use their printer, you got to use their filament, especially if you want accurate prints. Now, I should be upset about this. Some people might be upset about this. Oh, you're locking us into using your filament? Well, no, they're not. They're giving you the option to get the best possible prints, but this machine is actually open. You can use any filament on it that you want. So the fact that this was the one printer out of all the printers that I tried that could actually print real Legos was to me justification for their claims of accuracy. But is it reliable? I'll be honest, the print before this one failed. And I don't know why it failed. I was using their filament. I was using their printer. It's possible that it failed because I moved this printer into this environment. And maybe it was too hot that day. I had to remove the filament from it and it was kind of wavy like they had some nasty heat creep. Now do I blame Zortrax for that? I'm not entirely sure but it does shoot down their claims of reliability. Now I don't know what they could have done to make this better and I don't entirely blame them for it. There's still some study to be done on this one but I did manage to redo the print and it came out good. A little bit stringy unusually but a good print nonetheless. However after this print all of a sudden, I had no excitement for using this machine anymore. Sure, it was reliable, but the fact that the build plate only does half of a job of what a build plate should do, removing this print was something that I was so not looking forward to that I just couldn't bring myself to doing any other prints on this machine. And that makes me sad. Plus, removing these rafts are just... Oh, and their supports don't come off easy either. It's frustrating to me. I want this printer to be better. And, and really, the only and biggest sticking point is the build plate. If the build plate would release the prints afterwards, if it were smooth and we didn't need a raft, I might be very happy with this printer. And like I said, I contacted Zortrax because I wanted to look at their next generation of printers. So maybe in their next generation of printers, they'll fix this and they'll enable a 3D printer that is easy to use and accurate and reliable. I suppose I should probably score this printer. It's not cheap, but it's also not the most expensive printer out there. It is more expensive than most people might consider, but if you're a business, a makerspace, if, especially if you need an accurate and reliable 3D printer, but its ease of use, 
Mm -mm. I, I can't recommend it on ease of use. Also, capability. Now, I have in the past given other printers a boost in capability if they do what no other printer can do. And to be honest, this one gets that boost in its capability score, if only because it prints super accurate Legos. And with Legos, it can also print mechanical parts as accurately as you want it. But this build plate just takes that ease of use score and tanks it just absolutely brings it down it makes it so hard to use that honestly i'm glad i hadn't sunk cost into this or i might have made a fallacy of a decision so there you go the zortrax m200 impressive impressive quality impressive accuracy really really hard to use good luck guys before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. <laughs>